All right, uh, welcome to the Robert Show. We are here at Data and Analytics uh, Gartner in UK. Uh, very excited to have Matt Stallwall, who's the field CTO at Snowflake, uh, here with us at the At Scale booth. Welcome to the Robert Show, Matt. Thank you, Robert. I'm pleased to be here. Okay, very cool. Uh, I'm looking forward to be discussing uh, a lot of things with you. But why not start with uh, your introduction, please? So, as, as mentioned, I'm uh, Matt Stelval. I work what, as what we call the field CTO covering data science for EMEA. So, my job right. is to meet with customer and partners and talk about, you know, how Snowflake works in a data science context. Okay, that's pretty cool. I'm, I'm sure you might be, you know, jumping in and out uh, with the technical folks a lot. And uh, also, there's one important question that, you know, kind of comes to my mind in the, uh, you know, the new AI world we are in. And, uh, you know, I just wanted to learn a little about that, you know, I've been seeing Snowflake uh, investing in making a lot of investments in AI and ML. So, what's what's the next big thing that's coming up for Snowflake in anything that you would like to share with our audience? So, I mean, we're doing a lot of things and a lot of investment and data science, AI and machine learning is obviously one big area because in the end it's data driven and Snowflake is all about data. So it does make sense. So we have done a number of investments. We've done a number of uh, acquisitions like Applica, which is all around document understanding, which we hopefully will integrate with Snowflake. We are focusing a lot on the data science workload, bringing more different types of functionality around the ML and, and AI to be built in in Snowflake. Right. Obviously, we also have with the Streamlink acquisition, making it possible for data scientists and, and others to build more data-driven applications directly in, in Snowflake. And of course, there's going to be a lot of announcements during the Snowflake Summit in June in Las Vegas as well. Oh yeah, can't yeah. wait for that one. Yeah. Uh, thanks for sharing those insights. Also, you know, obviously investments in AI and ML side is amazing. And Snowflake is like the king for the data warehousing. We've always known Snowflake for that. And so, I would also love to learn a little about what's new and coming to continue, you know, the leadership and how you're kind of supporting the analytical workloads here. Can you share a little about that with our audience? Yeah, absolutely. So, one big part of it is our Snowpark offering. So, enabling people not just use SQL yeah. to do the analytics, but also to enable them to use Python and Scala and Java, right. which opens up a lot of things. Obviously, the data marketplace or the marketplace with data sharing and collaborations is a big part of this because yeah. getting access to data easily will make my life much easier as an analyst. So, that is something we focus. And the third part we are doing a lot around is bringing applications to the data. So, we are talking what we call native applications. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. That's uh, pretty interesting. That brings me to another very important question, Matt, uh, which is around semantic layer. We have a lot of common customers yes. that uh, you know Snowflake and AdScale shares. And uh, you know now a lot of folks have been you know asking about semantic layer. So uh, though it was at the start of the data warehousing itself, where semantic layer played a very important role, but now how do you look at semantic layer and what do you think about it? Yeah, it's a good question, and and. Maybe this is saying how old I am, but, but when I started out uh, a while ago, I was building data warehouse, we were implementing BI tools, and the way how we implemented the, the, the semantic layer was through the BI tool. The challenge back then, it was very limited because it was just one tool. And then we have the whole area with unstructured data, we have Hadoop, and people were thinking like, we only need to throw in the data, and we can make a lot of sense of it. And what I see now when I talk with customer is, they do want to have this business understanding, the definitions, they want to have a common semantics around things. They want to reuse the same metrics for multiple purposes. Right. And that's where I see the semantic layer is doing a comeback because wow. it solves a lot of things. I think one difference now is instead of having it built in in a specific BI tool, it's a separate solution that can be utilized by multiple tools instead. Okay. Um, and that is the big advantage with people like you at that scale. Yeah, definitely. And yeah, for sure, it helps a lot of customers in a wide range of yeah. you know requirements that they have. So pretty cool. Thanks for those insights. Uh, very quickly, in terms of uh, you know another important question. So, what's your take on all the fuzz about data warehouse versus data lakehouse? Is there a real consideration, or it's just a bunch of you know uh, the marketing hype that you see? Yeah, that is a yeah. That is, it's not a new question. We get it a lot, <laughs> and. 
I, I think my take on this is this is based initially on, on technology limitations. Yep. So the versus has to do with, well, if you only have a solution that can only do a data warehousing, you will focus on that. If you only can do data lake, you will do that. Okay. So it, it's more of a around limitations than possibilities. And, and exactly. mean, I mean, coming from Snowflake where we already from day one, we were focusing on solving both the data warehouse and the big data problem in the same product. This has been a non question for us because it's not either, it is both because it's different way of utilizing the same data. Yeah. So, so I don't really see it, but I know other vendors do to want to have a distinction between it, but I think it's kind of a, based on the limitation of the technology you provide. Yeah, no, I think uh, that's a good point, definitely. In, uh, I'm pretty sure uh, a lot of folks who are watching us might come up with more, many more questions around Absolutely. this to you. So thanks for that. But uh, since we are here at Gartner uh, at Data and Analytics Summit, uh, I would love to hear a little about what are the top themes that you see around. Uh, and at the same time, also, I would love to learn a little about your talk, which is happening tomorrow, if I'm not wrong. Yeah, so, I mean, the themes I'm excited about is obviously around AI and data science, nice. because that is my area, and I think there's a lot of things that is ongoing with generative AI, chat GPT, and these type right. of things. But I also find it's very interesting around uh, the data governance and these type of things, and obviously, I mean, the talk we have tomorrow, the presentation with Nat West, is around the ESG. Oh. And ESG data is something that is becoming more and more important. And it's going to be very interesting to listen to a big customer, how they are solving that problem with the help of the Snowflake technology. So that is something I'm looking forward to very much. Okay, this is amazing. I'll be definitely looking forward to your talk, Matt. Yeah. Uh, but again, thanks for joining the Rabbit Show. It was such a pleasure to have you. And definitely I'm looking for a bigger uh, version of our interview and talk more about data warehousing, AI, ML, and much more. But thank you again. Happy to be here and I'm looking forward to that anytime. Awesome. Thank you very much. Thank Have you. a nice day. Take care. You too. Thank you.